hot and kind of wet Sunday morning, a little muggy out here today. We had some rain yesterday, about an inch worth. So, uh, you know, it's the middle of summer, middle of June, so we're good. It's not middle of summer, it's the middle of June. And we're happy about that because we're getting close to green corn dance season and uh, a little bit of rain is going to help us out. So we're feeling good about that. Today, we come uh, thinking about our Gina Flaki servant. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we strive to, to be a good servant to Creator, but that requires a plan. God has to let us know what the plan is. And that's where we get into trouble sometimes. That's where we struggle. We have some frustrations. And so, to help us out on that regard, today we're going to go to Isaiah, Isaiah 41, 8 uh, through 13. So, let's go look at that. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you, whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Yes, all who are incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. Those who strive against you shall be nothing and shall perish. You shall seek those who contend with you, but you shall not find them. Those who war against you shall be nothing at all. For I, your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, do not fear. I will help you. And our reading from the uh, New Testament today is from Luke God, uh, Luke 7, 36 through 50. Now, this is kind of a long-winded reading, and most of it uh, is not really uh, a deep part of our inspiration today, but some of it is very important. And uh, so, because of the length of reading, I'm going to limit how much I read in the charity here. I'm only going to read uh, 36 through uh, uh, 39, I believe. Yeah, 36 through 39 in charity, and then I'll come back to the rest of you. Ilono, Iyosdi, Afwalisti. Utayo Selan Sele, who leads Da Yan Nanehi, who Yan Le No, a police, Si Ganelani, a lay, who Ligi Yas Da Nane, a leads Da Yan Di Gani Yan Kuono, a gay Yan, Nahan, Gadu, He, Ihi, as Gan Nahi. Udole Hansan, Jisa, Akwan, Lezi, Ganela, Ganaga, Alizda, Yaha, Ska, I. Ulohe, Gugu, Nuhan, Nuya, Unega, Kotlan, Tanahi, Akli, Sdi, Aklo, Nedi. Ale, Ule, Ne, Dakla, Sadam, Oni, Dijla, Da Florehi Ale Ule Nami Julas Dini Da Wo Sana Tani Ju Jugasa Wo Lami Ale Yuka Yodo Tane Uz Di Yegani Ale Udu Jalani Jalasi Dani Ale Yulo Netane A Klo Nedi A Kwalis No Nazi, Yawanada, Yugoham, Uneje, Yadanada, Pia, 
Context in here is basically if you look at before, prior to this, God had been on trial. The trial was over. Now we're moving on, and we're in this third book. And in this context, uh, we see here where we find that the question arises: What's God's plan from here? What's God? What is God up to? What does God expect from the people now that all this other stuff that has happened has been fulfilled and we are at this place? How do we know that God even has a plan for us? How do we know that God even is paying attention to us? In this reading, we find that your law, our creator, God, does have a plan for each servant. And in here, in this text, the author says that we are introduced for the first time to a Jewish word, and I'm not real great at this, to be honest with you. I don't know Hebrew that great. But Evid, I believe, is the pronunciation. And it means servant, or child of Israel. And it's the first usage of that word in the Hebrew Bible. This is where it starts. 
after all the prior stuff that has been portrayed and talked about, this is where God says, those of the house of Israel are my servants. Those who are descendant of Jacob are my servants. Now we know from Jesus that everyone is considered a child of God. And Jesus in our reading today basically is saying the same thing except Jesus saying I know who the servants are by those who love me, who love God. So there's a caveat there. There's a, a little extra clarification that God is saying, okay, I can tell who my servants are because they love me. And they love me because I have forgiven them their wrongdoings. I have done my part. God has got a covenant with us, and God is saying, as my servant, there is an expectation. That expectation is, now that I've forgiven you, the expectation is that you're going to love me. So what does that mean? How do we know if we love God? How do we work through that? And what does that mean as far as God's plan for us? I mean, realistically, <laughs> let's face it, who among us hasn't woke up in the morning wondering, what is going on here? What am I going to do? You're struggling each and every day with your job, with an uncertain future in a society where uh, basically God is not really valued, even though there's a lot of talk about it. And you wonder, how has God created a plan for me, and what is that plan? I do. I struggle with it even today. You know, there's so many different options out there, you're wondering, okay, there, there's not just a fork in the road. There, it, it's an infinite number of directions. Which one do you choose? at any given moment, on any day. How do you discern what it is that God's plan is for you? We've all had that, and yet, you know, we feel God's call each and every day. How do we respond to that call? What do we do? Well, Christopher writes, you know, he, he tells us that God is specifically saying that as a servant we are children of a community, children of a specific family. So what is the context of that family? What is the expectation of that family? Well in this, in Isaiah we find the expectation is to adhere to the cultural and spiritual values that Isaiah is proclaiming as prophet. For the people of Israel. That was the expectation then. Jesus came and shared an expectation for the people in this story that we just read, part of the, the book of God. There is a story. And in that context, you know, we see the distinction between here's the Pharisee who invited Jesus to his house, literally saying, you know, our bodies are our house, our souls are our house. We invite Jesus into our hearts, into our minds, into our souls. But do we really make him welcome? Do we really make Jesus welcome? Here the Pharisee we see invited God into his house, invited Jesus into his house. And they didn't treat him well. Didn't show him any respect. Didn't show me your reverence. And yet here's a stranger who isn't actually a stranger because everybody knows her. But she just apparently barges into this house and walks up to Jesus, starts crying. We don't know why. All we know is that she's people say she's a sinner. 
well, okay, who is it? And she's crying, washing his feet with her tears, crying with her hair. I mean, she's being humble to him, treating him with great reverence and respect. Do you treat Jesus in your heart and in your house with great reverence and respect? Do you show God love in your heart and in your house? Pharisee did. And Jesus pointed that out and said, hey, you know, I've forgiven both of you. Just as those debtors, he used a nice little parable there, a little analogy, saying, hey, God forgave two debtors, or the master gave, forgave two debtors. One had a large debt and one had a small debt. Which one's going to love God the most? And the Pharisee said, one whose debt was great. Now that seems to be a risk that comes with a plan. It's easy if you haven't thought of yourself as really truly committed to God as you saw as part of being a servant to put your own priorities and your own ego is equal to or greater than God. That's the catch. That's the trap. In order to truly be a servant and to be willing to listen to God's plan and to follow God's plan, we have to be as humble towards God as that woman and to love God that much in that way and that's a great illustration back to Isaiah here God gives us assurance that we haven't been cast off we haven't been set aside that God is holding, and that's I love that last verse in this reading today in Isaiah. I think that, that just sums it up right there. All of it. For I, your God, hold your right hand. Okay? Right there. God's holding our right hand. Just like I hold my granddaughter or grandson's right hand. God is holding our right hand. And telling us, don't fear. I'm going to help you. Now that's a promise. That's a commitment that God gives us regardless of who we are, regardless of our background of what we have done. Now, Stephen Grabchick, or Grabchick, sorry, Stephen Grabchick, in uh, uh, writes that uh, Ajisha showed that woman that she was valued and in Isaiah, we see the same thing. By this, this writing here, God is saying, by holding the right hand, God is showing that we are valued. That God's plan for us starts with the foundation of being valued. Being important enough for God to pay attention to us. And yes, God has an infinite number of right hands. <laughs> in case you were wondering, so that everybody's hand can be held at the same time. That's God. That's the difference between us. We got one, we have got many. That's okay. Uh, yeah, you're going to get quite a visual image over that one, don't worry about it. But keep in mind that it starts there. Now, what is God's plan from that point? In our Indian religious tradition, we have ceremonies and rituals that we do to help us get into that space where we can better discern God's plan for us. And so, what we have to also to realize is that God's plan for us is not static. It's not set in just one thing. 
that God's plan for us can be manifested in many ways, and that, because of our need or our desire to prepare for the future, is not necessarily what God's too concerned about. God already knows what's coming next in the choices that we need to make. And so we are given the task, as challenging as it can be, of not being concerned about what's going to happen tomorrow, but to trust that God has our, our hand, is guiding us. And today to be focused on what we need to do today to respond in a good way to what's coming next. That's an acceptance requirement and a commitment requirement for each and every one of us. That we have to be willing to accept God on God's terms and not expect God to accept us on our terms. And to commit to loving God no matter what that call is. And trust me, sometimes it, it doesn't go the direction that you kind of might want it to. God says, okay, yeah, I understand you want to go over here, you want to do this, but let's focus on this for a while and see what happens. And so in that context, God's plan for us is not to be concerned about what's next, but more to be concerned about what's now, about doing the next right thing today. And how do we do that? How do we, how do we, uh, how do we know that God loves us? Well, we know God loves us. But how do we know that we love God? Well, the answer is simple. We have the promise that God is with us, and we have the woman who did a demonstration, an act of love to Jesus. Never said a word. Didn't ask permission. Just went and did it. Walked humbly up to Jesus and did what she felt she had to do because she was called to do it. Didn't hesitate. Barged right in. That's pretty good. Too. Demonstrations of love for God. What do you do that demonstrates your love? There are many things that, that we do to help people out that we don't share. We don't tell people about it. Because it's not about us. It's about us loving God and loving the people and doing the next right thing. These are quiet demonstrations that do not bring accolades. They do not draw attention to ourselves. In our Indian religious values, we seek not to draw attention to ourselves, but to build community that is devoted to being good servants. This is the expectation that God has for us, and that expectation is to do demonstrations of love for, for God, for the name of God, for the benefit of others, without any reservation or expectation. And that's something that I think many people in the Christian community today struggle with. They struggle with it greatly. There seems to be an expectation in return for gifts, for service. The expectation of accolade, the expectation of acknowledgement. The expectation of uh, some kind of return gift. That's not our way. That's not Christ's way. Don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. That got lost along the way somewhere, especially in this denomination that we're dealing with right now. We were Christian Church Disciples of Christ here in the Northeast area of Oklahoma. That seems to be a challenge. And so uh, 
are you truly being a good servant? Are you truly loving God and loving others? Because that's the plan. That's all you got to focus on. The rest will take care of itself. Thank you.